clap there, Adrian. Very nice. Maybe I guess it has to do with the fact that maybe the subject matters, maybe something that I can sort of like, sort of connect with to an extent, I suppose. The subject matter of that poem. No, this is a tribute to the person that wrote him, in their words. This is a Fred's poetry. We're celebrating the greatness of the talent of a man who's no longer with us, who was a founder of the League of Canadian Poets and did more for poetry probably than anybody I've ever known. And he produced a great poet right there. So, <laughs> so uh, speaking of that, this is called A Respect for a Poet, and I really love this one. Great poem. When he is dead at last, do not remember what he did and say, in this he was good or wise. That sin in him was bad or hid. Deeds find a way to sink down time's dissolving sea that drowns both bad and good, all bodies and their memory. Say rather, he carved poems from the lipwood hours that ran and froze epiphanies in words that all who read can scan. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Wow. I bet you when it's time to go to heaven as I'm going up, I'll see some of these great poems, like billboards on my way up. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be lovely. <laughs> hey. Ooh, this one I really love because I've read it. I don't know the story behind this one at all, but I think he must have really been mad at this person, which he seems so gentle all the time. It's just hard to believe that he could get this mad at somebody. It's called Elegy for a Bad Painter. Pour his blood into scarlet tubes and drill a pallet from his hollow skull. Pluck soft brushes out of his blonde hair and on the gray bone easel of his limbs, stretch out the canvas of his flayed skin. He who could not make a paint picture living should have the chance to make one now. <laughs> I love that poem. I don't want to make one. It just seems so unlike him, doesn't it? <laughs> I find that poem quite thrilling when I'm annoyed at anybody. <laughs> I picture myself stripping the skin off. <laughs> Here's a very lovely one called In a Hospital. In a hospital, a breath of infant breath blends with a last gasp breath. The child does not know he is alive, nor the man that his breathing's done, nor can those watchers who pronounce that one is dead and the other bone born, say with certainty of what they saw before them, any more than this. In a hospital, we watched two breaths meet in time. 